Welcome back. Today, I'm continuing the process to convert my 1981 DeLorean to an electric vehicle. On today's episode, I'm taking our donor vehicle, this 2019 Chevy Bolt, and ripping it to pieces. I'm gonna remove the electric motor, the inverter, the charger, all the electrical cables and everything like that so that we can move it into the DeLorean. This is Project Lightning. Jumping in under the hood here, you can see that I'm removing a little bracket that holds the battery coolant surge tank. I'm also working on removing the high power distribution module, which is the large box on the left here. Then I remove the battery coolant surge tank. I'm not following any procedures to remove anything. If I see a bolt, I remove it. If I see a connector, I remove it. If there's a hose I can disconnect, I do. The end goal is to remove absolutely everything from under the hood. It's all coming out and I don't need to be strategic about it. Heading under the car now, I'm draining the Power Electronics cooling loop. This loop provides cooling to the electric motor, transmission, inverter, DC-DC converter, and battery charger. This loop gets cooled by the radiator. Now that the power electronics cooling loop is drained, I can remove the hoses from the DC to DC converter. This module converts the 350 volts from the battery pack down to 12 volts. This box works like the alternator in gasoline vehicles. At this point, I realize that I can't remove the DC to DC converter while it's still attached to the battery, so I move over and disconnect the battery distribution fuse block, then the battery strap, and finally the 12 volt battery. Then I disconnect the wires from the battery distribution block so I can remove the DC to DC converter. I continue on to remove some items this module with three large connectors on it is the engine control module. Even though this car doesn't have an engine, it still has an engine control module. The ECM is attached to the battery tray, so that gets removed after. Along with removing a bunch of wires, you'll also see me labeling wires as I pull them out. If I know what something is, I wire the label with its name. If I don't, I might write a letter on the cable and another on the thing it's plugged into. Otherwise, I might just say, this goes to the module under the hood on the left. The next two modules to remove are the power inverter module and the drive motor battery charger. The power inverter module on the left takes high voltage DC power from the battery and converts it to three phase AC power that powers the drive motor. It also handles converting that three-phase power back to DC power during regenerative braking. The charger module takes AC wall power from the charge socket and converts it to high voltage DC power to charge the battery pack. Both of these modules are on the power electronics cooling loop, so hoses have to be disconnected from each. With the charger removed, you can finally see the power electric carrier frame, which is the black rectangular frame that the electronic modules are all sitting on, and you can get a peek at the electric motor below. And as the inverter is removed, you can see more clearly the integrated transmission and differential case. Now that things are out of the way, I can make a lot of progress on disconnecting wiring harnesses. All of the orange cables that you see here are high voltage cables. Most of them are connected to the battery pack through the high power distribution module and are around 350 volts DC with the exception of the three wire orange cable here. It's running high voltage, three phase AC power between the inverter and the electric motor. The remaining wiring is all low voltage wiring running off of the small 12 volt battery system. The wiring is very tight. 
there is exactly as much wire as necessary to make it where it needs to go, and it's all wrapped in plastic loom and electrical tape. There are probably a hundred places where the harness is attached to the frame or body to keep it from moving around, and there are at least a dozen ground wires. The next item blocking my access is the front fascia. This fascia is held on with bolts in the wheel wells, so those get removed, and as is the case with most cars with 90,000 miles on them, this one has met a few curbs, so the lower portion of the fascia is pulled off in a few pieces. At the very front of the vehicle, I remove a harness for the electronic aero grille and the ambient temperature sensor. The front fascia then comes off, revealing access to a lot more things up front, including some of the wiring for the charge port, which isn't quite ready to come off. This small round thing is the pedestrian sound alert speaker that makes a humming noise at low speeds. There are also horns on either side of the radiator and some wires going to the windshield washer fluid pump. The majority of the wiring harness under the hood is now disconnected only being held in by the fuse block. I decide to drain the final cooling loop. This one is for the passenger compartment heater. It's a very simple loop with a small reservoir, pump, resistive heater, and heater core inside the cabin. At this point, the electric motor is mostly disconnected and I want to get it removed. To do that, I first have to remove the CV shafts that connect the motor to the wheels. That means removing the wheels, the axle nut, and either the upper control arm or lower control arm. The first time, I removed the upper control arm, but I realized that to drop the motor, you have to disconnect the lower control arm anyway because it's attached to the front suspension cradle. On either side, I removed the steering linkage from the knuckle and disconnected the lower control arms at the cradle. The suspension is then free to twist out of the way. At the back of the motor, I remove the battery coolant heater that warms up the battery when it's cold out, and a few wiring harnesses that connect to the battery. Up front, I then remove the AC compressor. This compressor is tightly tucked alongside the motor, and it is responsible for cooling the cabin as well as cooling the battery coolant. The last item to remove before dropping the motor is the seat. Not because you need to remove the seat, but because you need to disconnect the steering linkage, and I couldn't get under the dash with the seat in the way. I then slowly lower the front cradle onto some jack stands. Once some of the weight of the vehicle is on the stands, I remove the handful of very large bolts that attach the frame up to the body. As always, there were two bolts that I missed, and with some wiggling, the cradle stayed down while the body was lifted up. 
It quickly snagged on the front radiator, but once that was removed, the lower cradle and motor was free. The motor weighs about 175 pounds, so I lifted it with an engine hoist and then removed the three motor mounts from it. With the cradle removed, I finally had easy access to most of the remaining items under the hood. The windshield wiper arms were stuck, so they got a shot of penetrating fluid and were left to sit for a minute while I tried to remove the air inlet panel. On the passenger side, there is one final high voltage module left, which is the cabin heater. The cabin heater is a high voltage resistive heater that can put out around six kilowatts of heat. On the driver's side, there is only the fuse block remaining, and the engine harness went along with it. After sitting with penetrating fluid for a bit, the windshield wiper arms were able to be removed, along with the air inlet panel, and then both windshield wiper motors. The final pieces under the hood are the brake booster and anti-lock brakes. The brake booster is still connected on the inside of the car so it will be removed in the next video. I then wrap up this video by removing the charge port and the headlights. As you can see behind me, under the hood of this 2019 Chevy Bolt, there is not much left. And so that brings us to the end of today's episode. However, if you think this seems like a fun project, you won't want to miss out on the next episode, which is going to be in about five minutes, where I start on the interior. So please, show me that you're interested and give me your support by subscribing. This is Project Lightning.